the NBA has put themselves in a weird position, whether it's injury management versus taking the regular season more seriously. Now, I know that a lot of NBA fans have complained about players sitting out games, missing games and stuff. And I just want to say that I've had no problem with load management this entire time. I totally understand it because we, the fans and fan bases, have always like prioritized ring culture and being like, oh yeah, but you need these real, these you need to win these 16 games. You need to win these 16 games to secure your legacy. The NBA over the offseason put in the 65 game rule to be able to uh, get these accolades. And I wouldn't have a problem with these accolades or whatnot. I feel like where the NBA went wrong is that these 65 game thresholds have huge contract implications for people that like actually got injured and stuff. It's not like these players are like sitting out games just to sit out games sometimes. Like Tyrese Halliburton had a real injury and now he's like three games away from losing like $40 million. If you're new here, welcome in. And if you know me, welcome back. Uh, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and it's easy and it helps the channel go really far. Let's get back to the video. And I know what you're saying. Yes, these NBA players are already rich. Don't do that. Don't do that. These NBA players, yes, these NBA players are rich, but compared to how much the owners make, it just pales in comparison. So let the players get their 40 million if they're playing 65 games or not. And I'm bringing this up because yesterday we saw Joel Embiid has been, Joel Embiid has been the face of both foul baiting, load management, injury management this year which is not the best two things to be like constantly disliked for. The thing is, is that a lot of these fans just assume because a player is sitting out that they're not actually hurt or that something's not actually bothering them. And especially when you put into perspective a player like Joel Embiid, who has gone into multiple playoff years battling an injury or being hobbled or not being 100%. He is one of the players in the NBA that you're like, yeah, actually, we keep confronting you about your playoff legacy. And if you want to like manage yourself and be your best self, you should actually sit out these games. And I know that Joel Embiid is, it's very weird that people are like, oh yeah, Joel Embiid is ducking big competition. He only wants to play uh, the lower whatever the lower seed ones yeah there are certain things where it's like yeah it's heartbreaking when an nba star sits out during the christmas day games or whatever but you got to understand these players are not trying to make injuries worse i think there's always been a slippery slope for athletes of any sport whenever an athlete is playing with an injury or a nagging injury usually you assess can the injury get worse is it likely if the injury gets worse or something? And I know it varies from injury to injury, but my thing is that a lot of these players get criticized for not playing when injured, but then we also turn around and be like, oh, this player was not himself in the playoffs. I wonder why, man. I wonder why. If you're making players like play through all these injuries and then when it matters the most, they're not at their full health, that's why I feel like this thing, this, I, that's why I feel like we always contradict ourselves as fans when we're rooting for this stuff. And I know it's heartbreaking for a fan when you go to a sporting event and your favorite athlete is out or not playing or whatever. You know, you saw the girl that flew all the way from Germany to watch Killian Hayes play. Imagine how heartbroken she would be if Killian Hayes wasn't playing, you know? Yes, the NBA is driven by fans. It's run by fan appreciation. It's, But at the same time, fans should not feel entitled to a player's performance, in my opinion. Like if a player is actually facing a nagging injury and there are so many games in the season. Now, I know that a lot of people have proposed the NBA shortening their season, and I know that the NBA is not going to do that because there's money involved. So if the NBA is not going to shorten their season, we should probably just let these players sit out when they 
when they don't feel like they can play optimal. And I know that what we used to say is that people used to play all 82 games. And th that day is, those days are gone. And I understand that a lot of people are like, feel disappointed in that. And there are no like real NBA Iron Man besides like Mikhail Bridges and like a couple of others, I think. But I think it's just a different game now. Especially we're in an era where people are like thinking about long-term health and like medicine's never been better than it has. And I think that that matters, especially when a lot of these players like longevity is important, right? Like if Steph Curry didn't have those shoes that fixed his ankles, he wouldn't be able to play till he's 35. Kevin Durant is coming off like an Achilles tear. So you see those like medical marvels as well. But you also got to understand that 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 comes with like actually treating these injuries right where it's like hey sit out don't play through this and it it's heartbreaking i feel bad for players in the league sometimes where it's like these players have actual injuries like ben simmons in his back dude i don't think ben simmons gets enough um i don't think people understand how serious ben simmons's back injury is because a lot of people just like make up the narrative that oh he doesn't want to play oh he doesn't want to play we don't know as fans how serious an injury really is we only see like the basics and be like oh he back sprained ankle whatever we don't really know how severe we don't know what the situations and circumstances are for that and now ben simmons is back and he had like a trip like almost had a triple double his first game you know i feel like we as fans need to have a little bit more compassion and empathy towards these players and athletes that put their body on the line for a lot of games out of the season and not be like criticizing them when they have a nagging injury and a lot of players on the team and coaches on the team look at them to perform in the playoffs or perform when it matters the most or perform when the lights are the brightest. I think that it really gets to be like hypocritical, not hypocritical, but it really gets to be some kind of like dilemma when this happens. And I hope that for the future's sake, we put a stop to it. I don't think that the NBA 65 game rule should exist to like lose players money or have the potential for players to like lose out on certain things. I think that even if someone had a serious injury, if they play 65 games versus 55 games, I don't think that that 10 game difference should make a difference in whether they make third team all NBA or not. There's also another thing about how the media voting also affects like MVP and all NBA and a lot of people in the media when you see the list of names, you're like, there are a couple of names in there that are like, hmm, I don't think they should have a vote, but that's a whole thing for another day. Also, I just went on a walk and it's really hitting me that when it comes to load management and injury like management, we only care about the stars. Like, I don't think anyone's really asking how like Gabe Vincent's injury management is going. Or if it was like someone like Jay Crowder, I don't think that we as like the NBA Twitter and NBA masses would really care. Also injury management, the silver lining between like sitting a player out for rest is being able to play some of the younger guys in your organization. And also I think it's kind of an important thing to prepare for, especially in the playoffs, being like, what are the Joel Embiid list minutes gonna look like? What if Joel Embiid has to miss a game? And you really need the rest of your players on our roster to not only like just win the game, but like play a certain way without him. I think that that's also like just as important being able to like win games without certain players because in the playoffs, injuries happen, fouling out happens. And I feel like that's worth resting a star player like five games out of the season to be like, oh, okay. We have this lineup. If we play them, let's see if they play them for a long sample size. If it can, if it's gonna work for a whole game. Maybe I'm just spewing, I don't know. So I honestly think that the NBA will go back and look at this 65 game rule because if more players keep speaking out, like Tyrese, uh, Draymond, and Paul Reed, like if more NBA players are gonna speak out against this rule, I feel like the NBA will have to like look inward and investigate because 
at the end of the day, it's gonna look very weird sometimes if there's someone that clearly deserved MVP and only played like 64 of the games versus like somebody else. Thank you guys for getting to the end of the video. I appreciate it. Feel free to like, follow, subscribe, comment, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.